Rishi Sunake, our Prime Minister, tragically, you'd almost feel sorry for him if it wasn't the fact he'd systematically helped to trash his country, his society, with disastrous consequences, it must be said, for millions of people, but it just gets worse and worse. So this video is a series of total car crashes. It is a motorway build-up, which is essentially what this government has become, so do brace yourself. But I do think that this series of car crashes says something very, very profound about the catastrophe which has enveloped this country for the last 13 years. So first of all, and brace yourselves because we've got to get through a fair bit of catastrophic content, um, but a Tory MP has said something genuinely insightful. It's been reported in the Tory supporting Daily Express that a number of Tory MPs have now submitted fresh letters of no confidence in Rishi Sunak. One of them is quoted as saying, it just feels like we've completely lost control. The country is falling apart. Nobody really believes the PM can win the election anymore. The country is falling apart. It is, yes, well spotted. Quite literally falling apart. You see, the devastating consequences of austerity, of sweeping ideologically driven cuts, are finally apparent to everyone except the most fanatical and delusional. It's now reached the headlines that our nation's schools are crumbling. Now, between the 50s and the 90s, the schools were built using reinforced autoclaved aerated concrete or rack, kind of like concrete aero bars. Uh, great idea that was. But anyway, that was supposed to have a, sa a safe time limit of around 30 to maybe 40 years. So the government has now ordered 100 schools to close immediately. So that means that pupils have to do studies either online or temporary facilities. And that's because of fears that those buildings could start collapsing on their heads. Whoopsie daisy. Now, when this always came to peril, one of the first victims of their cuts was the Building Schools for the Future programme. Well played, lads. Great idea. No obvious downsides there then. Now, what about our current Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak? Now, according to Jonathan Slater, the former permanent secretary at the Department of Education, when Sunak was Chancellor, he slashed the school building programme by 41%. And that was years after ministers were told there was a fatal danger of collapse. They just when did you know and what did you advise ministers was the scale of the rebuilding required? So there was an initial survey that the department carried out before I was the permanent secretary about 10 years ago. First time such a survey had ever been carried out because schools were now being run increasingly by the department. A second survey was commissioned in my time, and we saw that the backlog of repairs had increased. We saw the scale of the rebuilding programme that was needed. Three to four hundred schools needed to be um, replaced per year because of these system-built schools, post-war, concrete, only supposed to live, uh, have a design life for 30 to 40 years. Therefore, they need to be rebuilt and we needed to increase the scale of the programme accordingly. So, to be clear, the Department for Education goes to the Treasury and say, we need money to rebuild 300 to 400 schools a year, and you got what? So, while I was the Permanent Secretary, we got the funding to replace about 100 schools per year. A third or a quarter of what you'd ask for? Absolutely. So the government offered to rebuild a fraction of what the civil servant and those like him were asking for. Oh dear, oh dear. Now, what does Richie Sinek say to this? The former permanent secretary of the Department for Education um, has said this morning that when they wanted to put more money into repairing schools, you as chancellor didn't allow that to go ahead and in fact cut that budget. Are you to blame for what's happening now? Do you want to apologise to parents and pupils? No, I think that is completely and utterly wrong. Actually, one of the first things I did as Chancellor in my first spending review in 2020 was to announce a new 10-year school rebuilding programme for 500 schools. Now, that equates to about 50 schools a year that will be refurbished or rebuilt. And if you look at what we've been doing over the previous decade, that's completely in line with what we've always done, about 50 or so schools a year refurbished or rebuilt. That's what I announced as Chancellor in my first spending review. What are you talking about, Rishi? What's, what's the plan there in that response? Why did you think that was rebuttal? The government was told by civil servants that you needed between 300 and 400 schools a year to be rebuilt. The funding that was offered up originally was 100. That was then cut down to 50. So why does Rishi Sunak think that by repeating the fact he gave funding for just 50 schools a year that he's rebutted anything? Absolute clown show stuff there from the Prime Minister. Now, it gets worse. 
Oh, it gets worse, all right. Enter Education Secretary Gillian Keegan. Now, she did an interview. Let's start with what she said, because then she goes off camera and is recorded. And, oh, my God. It is not the job of the Department of Education, but we chose to do that because we wanted to make sure that we had that information centrally. On top of that, we wanted Let's to... Let's on that, yeah. A school collapsed. Yes. And it took you four years to send out questionnaires to find out how many schools had racked. Now we sent a warning out to the people responsible. But you're saying that the government is not responsible, ultimately, no. for the safety of children in schools. The, the school building's responsibility is with local authorities and multi-academy trusts. Do you believe the government did everything but we in its have, power? But, but we've taken further now. Do you believe the government did everything in its power, has done everything in its power, to make sure that children aren't being taught in schools that could collapse without warning? Absolutely, because the responsible bodies, the responsible bodies have that duty. What we have done since is we have basically said we want to have more information centrally. Well, I mean, so I don't think you should be congratulated on that. I mean, the, there are literally children. I'm not looking to, to be congratulated. I'm there just are, saying what we have done. There are literally children who have been going to school in buildings that could have collapsed. Children could have been seriously injured. No, the, no. Children could have died. And only now are you assigning caseworkers and money to sort this no, out? No, the responsible bodies have always been responsible for making sure they have surveyors, making sure they look at things like asbestos, have an asbestos plan, rack, etc. They have a responsibility for the maintenance of their buildings. So what she's saying here is the Department of Education doesn't have responsibility for school buildings. What is wrong with these people? Are they high? <laughs> you see, I think what actually, if we're going to be fair... What she's doing is offering a damning indictment of the fragmentation of our education system, which of course has been a right-wing policy pursued by this government, building it must be said on what New Labour did, because she's saying, well, these are academy trusts, their independence was not our job, Gov. But actually, in any case, they are part of the Department of Education, and the Department of Education does have ultimate responsibility for them, and it's in charge of those capital budgets. But anyway, it gets worse. Here she is after the interview finishes but we will get a plan and every single one of them will be done okay thank you very much thank you thank you does anyone ever say you know what you've done a good job because everyone else has sat on their and done nothing no 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 signs of that no oh dear what are we yeah what are we like how dare we holding the government to account for things they're in charge of like making sure schools don't fall on on our children's heads Instead, we should be grateful. Why don't we be nicer to them? They're just trying so hard, and we're just getting all pernickety about things like children's lives. Now, let's be clear here. The ruinous Tory strategy of slashing the state, trashing our public services, destroying the public realm, all of that is colliding pretty brutally with reality. And the consequences are literally placing the lives of our children at risk. That's where this is led. And they can't take responsibility for it because doing so would expose the bankruptcy of their entire ideology. That's the truth. Now, circle back, kind of feeling sorry for Rishi Sunak if it wasn't for the fact that he's an absolute national disgrace who's helped trash the country. They've tried everything this summer. This was their big summer fight back. And, you know, you've got to give them some sympathy because... He's really tried so hard to, you know, like scapegoat migrants and refugees and whip up bigotry. And, you know, that often works. That's often a success. But it hasn't really worked out, has it, Rishi? Just instead of, you know, dealing with the problems of the country, just deflecting anger onto desperate people fleeing foreign chores. Hasn't really panned out that well for you. Because the truth is, the country, as one of your own colleagues is briefing right-wing newspapers, has pointed out, the country is falling apart. And it's falling apart because of the ideology and the policies that your government has pursued. And that is ultimately why this Conservative Party is heading for catastrophic defeat. Even if, tragically, the alternative and offer isn't going to fix the problems caused by the Tories. Anyway, love to hear your thoughts as ever. Please like, subscribe, do support us on Patreon.com forward slash I'll see you in a bit.